Set that camera. Okay. Which one of those cameras so close? Am I, can you hear me? Let's see my audio. Mute. Admit. Okay. I've got three people here. Yay! How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, I hope that this is going to be able to do the recording the way I want it to be. And I know I had a few people register and some is better than none. So I'm recording. Uh, and I know how to um, share my screen. Today, you know, we have, I was talking about cabinet modifications the last time I was trying to do my Facebook live and it didn't go well because it didn't work. <laughs> Facebook live worked, but not my screen sharing where I had all these really good uh, pictures and, and um, to show you what I was talking about. Uh, and I can't figure out how to do it and be live. So here we are here. So for a few of you that are here, I'm Allison, you know me, your kitchen and bath design specialist and coach, um, teacher, mentor, extraordinaire. Okay, so we said I don't have that many people, but ah, who cares? You care? I don't care. I care that I'm doing this. That's what I care about. And for the people that registered and get the, uh, link to share it oh someone else is coming here let's admit them good 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 people are coming on people are coming on how are you all quarantining are you all staying safe i hope everybody is really just kind of staying home and not venturing out i've had um to try, well, um, to me, I won't go out. That's my problem is I won't leave the house. I tend to just stay in the house and not leave. And that's why I have to make myself get out. But now I'm actually, I, I can stay inside. Oh, we have another participant. Uh, okay. One person is waiting. Um, somebody else wants to come in. Betsy, okay, admit. Oh, we're getting quite a few people. Okay. Good, oh, this is good. Give it five more minutes. We'll see who else is going to join us. I have, in the meantime, I'm going to share my screen. Ah, here we go. Share that. Post attendee Zoom. What is this? That's not what I wanted to share. I'll stop the share. What's that? Let me 
share my screen, which is that there. Okay. So let's see. Can you, I guess you can see my screen. This is basically the company that I'm using the catalog from. It's a company that I do and have been a dealer for in the past, and I've sold them for a really um, uh, a very long time. So <clears throat> I'm very familiar with this cabinet company. I like them. And like all cabinet companies, they have their ups and downs and changing of the guard and who bought who and whatnot. And, and uh, in the 2008, we had some quality issues, but I do really like their cabinets. So um, Oh, shoot. I had my pages. That's because I'm not going through all the pages here. First thing I wanted to talk about, and let me just put my phone on to time this so that I can stay on time with everything. Uh, okay. And when it reaches an hour, I'll know when to stop. So this is the cabinet construction. And this is what people, they ask me, oh, what about the door? What about the door? No, what you really need to know about the cabinets is the cabinet construction itself. What makes one cabinet better than another cabinet is all in the cabinet box construction. So this company happens to order offer a multitude of um, options. They uh, have different construction levels for different price points. And now you could say, well, how do you, what makes one cabinet more expensive than the other? It's the box construction and then it's the door style. So those two different things, the box construction and the door are two different price components when de designing a kitchen. So it's not only just about the layout, it's about the cabinet construction. So I guess, what do I do here? Okay, that's all I'm gonna show. All right. So I can't tell who's here. I don't see anybody else wanting to join, but that's okay. All right, so this happens to be, what they are offering here is a hybrid wall construction. And it tells you what their hanging strips are, um, they're using a wood grain with a vinyl interior. It's half inch plywood sides. What makes this box hybrid is it that it has a half inch particle board top, meaning this, and a half inch, oh, should I make a hand? Yeah, this top or, and bottom, when they talk about top and bottom. And you could see there's a little recess here at the top where the top panel uh, is, down into the cabinet, it's you have a little reveal right here. So you have the same thing on the bottom of the cabinet. This is framed construction. So this, your face frame, oh, let's minus this a little bit. Your face frame is solid wood, okay? So this is standard, pretty standard. Let me just move my little face. Um, and then we have uh, three quarter, and it's particle board shelves. And here, this cabinet has vinyl interior. So it's a half inch plywood sides, plywood side, particle board. Oh, we got someone else wanting to come in. Okay. Um, let's see, Sue's neat. Okay. Um, so the back. And where does it say with the back? The bottoms are maple wood vinyl. Okay, so the bottoms of the cabinet, underneath the cabinet is vinyl, 
looking like natural maple pot plywood. So this cabinet, if you look under the wall cabinets, it's gonna be natural maple vinyl. And so a lot of times cabinet companies, a, a, me, a better cabinet company will finish that underside of the cabinet automatically or they won't. It's an option based on the manufacturer of the cabinets. This particular cabinet in the hybrid line has a maple, natural maple. So if you have cherry cabinets, cherry doors, cherry face frame, cherry sides, the bottom is gonna be maple vinyl plywood. Uh, uh, in this case, particle board. Um, and the same thing goes for the combination of plywood and particle board for the base cabinets as well. Now, this is something on each cabinet company, their toe kick space is also particular to each cabinet company. Some companies follow a three and a half inch high toe kick. Some cabinet companies follow a four inch high toe kick. And some European cabinets even have a six inch high toe kick. So this toe kick dimension varies on each manufacturer. So you need to know that when you're dealing with your doors and your, your cabinet reveals on the bottom and inset, you know, read, read uh, modifications that we'll talk about later. But what makes a, well, so here's our an plywood construction. So when you have your half inch plywood construction, you can customize your cabinets in any size. What does it say about here? Hybrid wall cabinets. See, there's difference. Like the shoulder is, is top unfinished dovetail, three quarter inch draw slides, extension draw slides. You want to read all these things. This is a hybrid cabinet. So it has the lowest line of cabinet. Um, you have your different levels of draws that make it level one, level two, level three, you know, A, B, C, D, and so on. So you can change the construction of the cabinet and you can upgrade your draws and your rollouts. And these are customized into 16th of an inch. So you get the, the lower grade box, but you can still customize it and upgrade your draw boxes. These are modifications to cabinet manufacturers. And this is a general standard. Every manufacturer of cabinets is going to have this book. They're going to have their technical guidelines and they're going to have some kind of a book. If it's a custom line, it's going to be like this, 958 pages. If it's a stock cabinet, it's going to be 100 pages. So here we have our different levels. And what they're saying here is we have the, it's wood grain vinyl interior, but it's half inch plywood sides. Oh, it's weird, our hybrid, hybrid, hy plywood. Plywood, plywood. You can upgrade your drawers. And see here is our box, the hanging strips, the same dimension, but the wood grain vinyl interior, half inch plywood sides, top and bottom and back. So you're upgrading your box now to be all plywood. One of the things you need to realize when you're dealing with your cabinets is here this little diagram where it says, this is a really important component, how the cabinet is finished, okay? This has an unfinished side. When you ask for a finished side, the plywoods will automatically flush finish the end. So your end of the cabinet, the side of the cabinet, is equal with the reveal on the face frame, as opposed to here where I have quarter inch unfinished ends. And that has to do when you're applying skins and things like that to the cabinets to combine. Like in this, the hybrid, you get an unfinished end with an eighth, eighth inch of a reveal, but if you order a flush fin, if a finished end, you're only gonna get still uh, just that, you'll still have that eighth of an inch reveal, which can be a problem when it comes to your crown moldings and tall cabinets that end uh, up against the um, 
countertop. So your plywood and, you know, refrigerator end panels, tall cabinets, or uh, and when you're putting on your crown molding for wall cabinets, it gets to be, it's a, doing your crown molding on a, with this eighth of an inch reveal is a problem. So you have the option here, you must indicate flush finished end on this particular construction. This plywood, all plywood construction, it's unfinished or flush finished, period. And this is an even more of an upgrade, which gives you your furniture look, because you can use cabinets to make um, a desk, a wall unit, um, uh, your pantry, your uh, mud room, anywhere that cabinets can go, kitchen cabinets can be modified to, to make that. But when you have a furniture end, it gives you a really beautiful finish on the end. You don't have any reveals. You don't have the end grain. You have um, the proper, a nice end, five eighths, furniture finished end, which would be an upgrade. And you don't do it everywhere. You do it every only certain places. And then we have, then if you get in, so this cabinet company offers lower, middle, and then upper, which is a five eighths plywood cabinet co construction. And it's going to tell you that the sides, the tops and the bottoms are all plywood, five eighths thick plywood, and the backs are quarter inch plywood. Um, let's go to our picture and you can see it's an unfinished end again with our eighth inch reveal and a finished end flush and a flush, the furniture finished end giving you the mitered, um, rabbited in joint. So that's, and then when this is another modification to cabinets and each cabinet company is different. This cabinet company happens to offer quite a lot of options with upgrading. And here is their standard draw box, which is a shoulder top unfinished dovetail, meaning it's got a shoulder top just means it has like a little, a little bevel on the top of the drawer over here. And, um, it's unfinished, okay? It's made out of solid woods and it's a quarter inch plywood bottom, but it's unfinished and the dovetails are unfinished. Then, and this comes with the three quarter extensions. You also can upgrade your draw slides. You can use this lower grade box, but you can do three quarter extension, stay epoxy, um, or seven eighths extension undermount soft close, full extension undermount silent close, or full extension undermount silent close with four dimensional adjustment. So each time you add something to this, you're adding to the price of the cabinets. And this is how we get to the price of what the cabinets are. So here we're working with just the box and now we're working with the draw and the draw slides. That's another component to the cabinet. Then you're up, you're gonna have a, a level two draw that they offer, which is going to be finished, uh, finished sides with um, shoulder top, with a finished dovetail. Uh, the joints are finished, the draw front is screwed into the box. And then you can have, again, you can upgrade so you can upgrade your draw box to be finished, have a finished dove, meaning it's clear coated. That's what they mean by having it finished. Or then we can grade up to this, which has a bull nose top and it's a, a finished and filled. So you get beautiful draw box. This is a higher end draw box. So whenever I go to a cabinet company and I want to see what the construction of the cabinet is, what do I do? I pull out the drawer. I want to see the drawer. I want to know the construction of the drawer. What are the drawer slides and what's the box like? Is it beautifully finished dovetail? Is it a, 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 a lower, shorter box with a unfinished dovetail with poor dovetail construction? So you want to, um, somebody else asking to join? One person waiting. Okay. Okay. I admitted her. We're all in there. 
Okay. I've got everybody in there. <clears throat> so the draw box and then the draw slides. So with this particular higher end, this is your level three bullnose top, which is a furniture fit uh, and finished dovetail. It only comes with full extension undermount sil silent clothes ball bearing or the silent clothes with the dimensional adjustment for your box. Then you can even upgrade it even further and you get this uh, black walnut front. The black walnut front really would be for your um, rollouts if you want to pull your rollout and have this beautiful, gorgeous um, edge on the front of the, the rollout. So when you pull your rollout, you're looking at this beautiful walnut. Again, uh, there it's a high uh, upgrading again and now if you want to go even higher you can do all your draw boxes in the black walnut which is an, um, a more expensive draw box so again what do you do you look at the cabinet is it framed is it frameless and you open the drawer and you talk about that draw box so here a lot of what i saw at kbiz was this um this walnut finishing on, on all the rollouts, all the inserts, but it's expensive, it's an upgrade. Uh, okay, and then here it talks about your different draw slides. So again, you wanna look at your ma manufacturer's options and your modifications for the different draw glides and what their description is on the draw glides. And even if you are an, an interior designer that doesn't deal with kitchens, it's a good thing to look at the manufacturer's book that you're going to be specifying to educate yourself and what you're giving your clients. And so you can be educated when you're talking to your kitchen designer, because a kitchen designer who deals with nothing but kitchens and bathrooms and cabinetry already knows all this stuff or should be learning this stuff. And that's why I'm here to teach you all about it. Cause you didn't know it was so complicated. This kitchen cabinetry and no clue was so complicated. Coffee sip. You just think like, oh, it's a kitchen box, la 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 la. You know, you gotta know how it's mounted, how your slide is mounted, how easy to install. Um, Here's your adjustments, four-way adjustable. You know, look at this contraption on this draw front. It's incredible. It's um, it's an incredible, incredible draw slide. Incredible, really, just incredible. And then it's going to tell you your draw box siding, blah 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 blah. Now, one thing you need to know is that your draw box never goes all the way to the back of the cabinet. Again, just get that. Make it stop. Um, your draw box never goes to the back of the cabinet. Your draw slides go to the back of the cabinet, but the, ca the draw box is never. So your outside measurement on your cabinet is 24. Your draw box is really only 20 or 21. What are they saying over here? Um, I can't talk right now. Is it emergency? See, the cabinet, uh, the draw box depth is really only 20 and a, and a 16th. Outside draw box, 21 inches. So a draw box is only 21 inches deep. Again, that varies by vendor by vendor. You got to check that measurement out because that again is a variation in the um, cost of the cabinets. Now, I'm not going to get into this. What was my 41? I had all my pages written down when I did my webinar the first time, but oh, is it here? Yes, here we go. I wanted to give you page 41. And now let's go to page 54. 
these are, again, what makes the cabinet expensive, different, less expensive. One thing, what you have to know is that your overlay on a framed cabinet is a different in pricing. You, if a partial overlay door, what we're seeing here, is less expensive than a full overlay door. So again, we're taking our box and we're modifying all the upgrades, all the different things that go into the price of the cabinet. Partial overlay, you wanna look in the spec book and see what your reveals are between your door frame and the door itself so that when you get it in the field, you're realizing you have these spaces of reveals on the top of the drawer, between the door and the drawer, and around the cabinet. And here, a full overlay, you could see that in this cabinet company, because it's a framed cabinet company, their bottom full overlay has a quarter of an inch reveal around it, but the wall cabinets have a inch and a quarter reveal at the top, which is usually allowing you to attach your molding of some kind, your crown molding of some kind, and uh, to put a, a spacer or a trim or mount your molding on top of that seam right there because you're going to have seams we have to hide our seams so if you want this to be uh, your crown molding is a different type of an install and you want to maybe uh, have it with a return and pull it forward you can upgrade the cabinet uh, again it's an upgrade to not have the quarter inch reveal at the top and only have a quarter inch reveal at the top so, okay, that's one, the what page? And then I had, uh, what was 56? All right, so here, and then you have your different hinge options for your partial overlay and your full overlay. A concealed partial hinge, this is concealed in a partial overlay, and or you have a knife hinge. The difference is the opening, 105 degree opening, this one, 180 degree opening. That means you can open your door 180 degrees or 105 degrees. So then when you have your concealed hinge for full overlay only comes with a concealed hinge and it gives you 107 degree opening. Okay. So then if you now with the framed cabinets, you can only do inset cabinets inset doors in a framed cabinet and one thing you need to make sure of is the um that you have all these inch and a half rails between the cabinets so then when you, when you put one cabinet together and another cabinet next to it you're going to have a seam and it's going to be an inch and a half showing and then the adjoining cabinet to the right or the left of it is also going to have that half one and a half inch style showing so here you'll also see that when you do an inset door the inset doors are beveled back the door itself so for expansion and contraction and opening and closing you need to have a back beveled door um, and so if you have split doors, it's going to look like this. You're going to get an eighth of an inch reveal between it. Talks all about your dimensions and your reveals. You have different hinge options when it comes to, oh, these are deep beat. When they say an inset door, flush inset door, that's just a, a plain solid frame. Or you can get a beaded inset cabinet, which is another upgrade, which gives you this little routed in, um, routed in bead and again here's our doors like this but you're gonna again you're gonna have your inch and a half uh, styles and rails between each cabinet then for your inset you have usually two options but the two the first being an inset option um, inset ball tip with a tip ball tip or minaret or finial tip usually have this kind of a tip that's what they mean by your hinge it comes in all these different colors or so that when you close your inset door you're going to see these are going to be exposed hinges or you can get a more decorative traditional fin minaret or finial hinge 
this company offers these two hinge types with antique nickel, oil rub bronze, polished chrome. So you can get these hinges in different finishes so that when you have your insect cabinet and you want to expose your hinges, you can, if the manufacturer offers it, upgrade your hinges to be oil rub bronze, antique nickel to what, match whatever you want, even matte black. So then those two options, or you have your inset, concealed inset hinge, which allows you to have the opening of 120 degrees, but you can't see this hinge, this is hidden. Okay, so it's concealed. And these open 180 degrees, and this opens 120 degrees. So that's another thing when you go to a cabinet, how much of a degree opening you get on your door is also a difference in price because these hinges concealed, you can get them to be opening 180 degrees or 140 degrees, and you can really access the inside of your cabinet nicely. And it also doesn't put stress on the hinge when you're opening and closing. It doesn't limit you, to, it gives you a nice swing on the door. Um, <clears throat> okay, so then, this is very complicated, very complicated, uh, okay. And then you go into I'm not doing the door styles because it's a different thing. Then this is where your step two comes into pricing of the cabinet, goes all into the doors, into the doors, okay? And all the different doors that they offer and the customization that you can do to the door, how the door is made together, what's the veneer, what's a coping stick, uh, how, what is it a miter? How does their miter get joined? You can get a miter joint. So if you get a really inexpensive cabinet with a poorly made miter joint, it's just going to fail over time because this is all wood products and they expand and contract. And even with those lam new laminate doors that are five piece, um, five piece, uh, door profiles, you got to still now worry about your crown moldings, your trims, your ends of the cabinets, the, the um, front frame and all the other things that go along with the five piece uh, laminate doors. Um, and then this cabinet company, you could get so close into doing your door, you can customize you, you can make and design your own door style if you want. You pick, this tells you the species, this tells you the design, what is it called, this is the elite, blah, blah, blah. You can customize the door outside of the door frame, and then you can even customize, here we have more frames to pick from, uh, more frames to pick from. Again, you can design your own door and then you can design your own center panel on the door. Do I want it to have a half inch flat panel with the, uh, it tells you the construction, the species. So look at all the different options you can have just for your center panel. Again, designing your five piece door, picking out all your different options in the door. This happens to be a very, um, give a lot of options, this cabinet company. And again, this is an older catalog. I think they still do it. And everybody's going to have their own name for whatever their arch is called, their valances are called. And these are top rail. You can actually modify the top of the cabinets to be, um, if you have an opened top cabinet you can do a valance as a top the top rail so you can have a decorative open wall cabinet it just doesn't have to be plain square around but these would be up charges and these are the options that they offer uh, here's all your moldings this is all in a spec book and then you can even specify how you want the outside edge of the door to be so again all of this customization is optionable, optionable, <laughs> it's optionable, making up words, making up words. So here you can read into all your door customization. So you really got to know what you're doing. You have to know that this is available within the manufacturer 
uh, that you are dealing with. Um, 65, 68. Okay, so now let me go into the modifications. This is just a few because I'm going to do this for the next half hour. Okay, let's go to 618. What is it going to be? Now, this is the modifications that this cabinet company can do to your cabinets. They can angle, blind, blind decorative end, dimensions, your door and drawer. All of these are modifications that can be done to a cabinet. So you can angle the wall back and it gives you all the things you can do with this angling of the cabinet your side your back and a side so if you had to um reduce something back down and you want to design it with angles to, to reduce it back to a different dimension if you want to go from 12 inches deep down to six inches deep uh for whatever reasons you want to design with and all of these Everything in the book has a price. These are prices. So if you want to take that cabinet and now you've upgraded it, your draw box, cha-ching, you've upgraded the draw slides, cha-ching, and now you're modifying the uh, cabinet, cha-ching. So each thing that you do to the cabinet adds a dollar amount to the cabinet. So when people say, oh, you're so expensive. No, I'm not expensive. The cabinet company is expensive. So we can do a clipped corner. This is a popular modification, but you need to keep in mind, you can route the, the clipped corner. And if you clip the corner, you have this dimension change from three inches on the side. So your shelves on the inside need to be modified with a vertical divider on the inside which you have to add your vertical divider so that when you open up the cabinets you have a regular side flush on the inside of the cabinet so you can have your full depth shelves that can come out to the to the normal face of the cabinet as opposed to having to be reduced size because you don't they don't cut the shelves on 45 degrees they just cut the box they're not modifying all your shelving that goes in there um, then you have your decorative end options now this is important because each one of these decorative end options is a different modification different look a different application and a different price you can either do a decorative door applied and these gives you all, and each manufacturer's nomenclatures are different for how you specify your um decorative door applied to a wall left like this would be decorative door applied wall left decorative door applied wall right or if you want it to be a furniture and and you have to read all these little things see all this wonderful things here it tells you all the things that you need you can do with this door and basically what it is it's a door matches the front of the door at, that you have here and they just screw it onto the side of the cabinet here on the side of a base cabinet it's just a door and here two equal size doors so you can see you're not able to line up your side panels it's just door door okay unless you start to specify a different modification with your doors standard you can get the door actually made as the panel of the side so that the whole side of the cabinet is constructed with a five piece style and rail um Okay, styles and rails. Uh, so the door is actually the, the construction of the cabinet. It's not on top of. So in essence, this door would add three quarters of an inch to the side of the cabinet. This does not add to the uh, dimension of the side of the cabinet because it's built as the side of the cabinet. 
and then you have special decorative door and special you can actually now once you have do decorative door and special you can have the the reveals and the doors lining up with the front of the cabinet and the side of the cabinet some people don't realize when you they'll go oh why doesn't it line up uh, why where i want these two to look the same from the front and from the side well that's this particular code up here okay so you can get a special have it made but you have to do your drawings and you have to specify again it's built as the side of the cabinet is not a door applied onto the side and then you can also get a working door on the was this a working door what is this one hinged right hinged hinge hinge these are working doors operable doors so that if you wanted to have a particular cabinet you want to get into it you can open the door on this side of the cabinet uh again we're continuing it we have all of this is again modifications to the cabinet that you're specifying then you can also cut down your cabinets in this particular cabinet company you can cut down the cabinets in increments of a 16th of an inch you need to know what your cabinet company will modify your cabinetry Will they only modify certain dimensions? Will they only modify in increments of three or one inch or two inches? Or what are their inches only? No half inch, no quarter of an inch. You need to know what the um, modifications are that you can do to a cabinet. And you start with the bigger box and then you reduce all these options and there's, there's no charge when you start with the bigger box and you cut it down. There's no charge for those in this particular cabinet company. Um, and then you want to increase, you have a dollar amount for increasing. So you can increase your all your wall cabinets to be 14 inches deep instead of the standard 12. Lots of modifications that you can do here. And you have to specify, do a special drawing or or specify what you want them to be reduced and increased to. Then you can have finger pulls added in particular cabinetry. It doesn't always work in a full overlay. Uh, you can door modifications. You can change the draw configuration, the door configuration on this particular one. Uh, you can change it from a two-door cabinet to a three-door cabinet. Um, you can have a one cabinet with four doors. And you can change the draw fronts. You can change the dimensions on the draw fronts for whatever reason you want one large draw, one small draw. You can add a draw. You can um, cut down a draw, meaning cut down the sides of the draw. Um, you can even have edge banding modifications, extended side back modifications. This is when you're a lot of times on an island or um, hiding a pipe chase or uh, maybe a wall return of some kind, but you can extend the cabinet side back. <clears throat> and you can also extend the side down and you can do this with um, framed cabinetry. It will have a, a wood frame extended down. You can hutch finish the sides of your cabinet, filling them all the way down. You can um, have a filler a filler modification, finish your back, finish your sides, finish your all these little details. You can finish the back of the cabinets. You can finish them with a beaded back, with a frame, a wainscot back. Uh, you can have finished ends plain. You can finish ends with a bead board. You can even finish interiors with a beadboard. You can do beadboard tongue and groove. 
You can uh, finish the interiors of the cabinets. You can finish the interiors with a beadboard interior. Sometimes that's nice on a uh, wall cabinet, open wall door cabinet. And you can even finish the interior with an accent color if you wanted to. So this is where you get into your customization. And if you as a designer that doesn't really specify kitchen cabinets all the time, if you know that there's these options, you can maybe get a little bit creative with the cabinet design if you know that there's these options there. You can attach combined cabinets at the factory where you're not installing these loose appliance cabinets in the field. This way you don't have seams and it's all built as one. Um, you could have these garages uh, added a, a two door, a one door, a tambour. Uh, you can even do it with drawers. You can have two drawers, one drawer, three drawers. You can modify the cabinets to be all seamed as one piece so that when you have an inside cabinet, you won't have that inch and a half re uh, cabinet frame with an inch and a half cabinet frame. In here, you'll just have one nice one and a half inch uh, style going straight down, eliminating the seam. And you can, it tells you how many seam cabinets you could put together. You could, and it's a modification, building the cabinet as one piece, and you gotta make sure you can get that into the house, okay? You gotta be able to get that into the house. You can't make one cabinet and then, ooh, I can't get it in the elevator or through the front door. Okay, and then we have, you can make a peninsula cabinet. You can have pipe chases cut into the cabinet if you run into a special situation where you need to cut out for um, pipes or uh, um, something in the wall, a bump out in the wall, or any interference that you need to have that bump out or pipe chase cut. You can even do it on the bottom of the cabinet. Some people, who wants to come in? Some people, want to do i've had people do this where they put the to, uh the paper towel holder up in there which i you know i don't know why anyone would do that because you're really ruining the bottom of the, the inside of the bottom shelf but i guess you're not ruining it but you might need to have this pipe cut out and here we have our different refrigerator panels, your different options. What else did I want to get to? These are all our refrigerator things and your special refrigerator side panels. Um, mm -mm. I wanted to get into attach with door on end. Look at all these things you could do. Do we do extended style? shelf modification style and rail modifications okay mm -hmm. the style and the rail they have decorative treatments you can have see this would be an included style because they just made the style of the cabinet the style of the cabinet s-t-i-l-e is this this uh, wood, solid wood part of the frame, and they've included it, meaning it doesn't add to the dimension of the size of the cabinet. And they have actually did a little route and a little circle groove. They've made a, another kind of a little detail groove or just fluting, staggered fluting. Um, you can even do this nice corner treatment. This is again an upgrade. Uh, but if you want to have something deep, if you're making a hutch or you're making a special piece or, or you want something really beautifully finished, you can have these decorative sides put on, uh, you know, they just route out this nice little detail on the side of the cabinet. It looks very pretty. You can even have, um, the bottom, you'll do it at the bottom with the finished valance. They'll take the bottom rail and make it as one of the valance styles that we, um, picked from the earlier in the, the uh, webinar and ah finished end no finished end 
here, you could see it's a wall at the bottom with the finished end so that the valance and the side of the cabinet are at the same, see that came down on the side. That's the difference. The side extended down to the valance. That's a finished end. Here, they're just adding the face frame to a valance and the side of the cabinet will not project down. So you have, that's a detail when you're designing, you need to know your modifications and how they're gonna be building that cabinet. And here we're talking about, this is the one thing you can do with, these are things you can do with framed cabinets that you cannot do with frameless cabinets. And we're just talking, Framed cap, framed cabinetry. We're talking framed cabinetry. Everybody talking framed cabinetry. Okay, style and real modifications. Now you can extend the styles, and in certain cases, if you don't want to add a filler and you don't want to have a, a seam or anything cut in the field, you can do an extended so style up a one inch extended, two inches, you just can extend it. And instead of using a filler or something like that, you can just have the side extended on the style. Extended styles, it's priced left and right, and it adds dimension to the size of the cabinet. So you have to specify, and here you could see it comes, oops, um, can I move that? Uh, do, 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 do. See how it comes out? So it adds to the dimension. Is that my thing? Adds to the dimension of the cabinet. So now I minus a little bit, minus a little bit. Uh, then you can extend it also top and bottom. So in certain instances, you might want to fin extend the bottom down, extend the top up. It all depends. And that's here it is with finished ends. They'll extend the, the end of the cabinet as top and bottom as well. Otherwise, it's just the top and the bottom, top and the bottom. Then if you have an include, so you, this is extended. Now we have included. The included top or bottom rail, you have to again specify it. Uh, so if you add a one inches to your included top rail, it will now become a two and a half inch overall top rail size. So whatever reason for your designing, your cabinet modification size will not change, but you're adding to the overall dimension of the style and the rail, including inside the cabinet and thereby not changing the size of the cabinet. And again, you can include your style, included style left or right, and you specify Again, if you, it starts out at an inch and a half. So if you want it to be three inches, you say, I want to increase it to be an inch and a half more. So inch and a half plus inch and a half is three, gives you three. I don't know, you might want to apply a spindle. You might want to apply a full overlay. You might want to apply a decorative a piece to it. Whatever reason, you might need to do this for clearance for the door swing. Um, and your inset, inset side panel, not available on full overlay, does not change, inset side panel. Oh, okay, they're insetting the side of the cabinet now. Um, but let me reduce this a little bit, because I don't know that I've ever used that on an inset. Okay, so this is just basically for inset. Not available on full overlay. So on, this is only on inset cabinetry. Trim style or rail. Here you can even cut it down. 
uh, use it to cut the face frame style or rail down, makes the opening larger, and it does not change the inside of the cabinet, but however, you can trim down the solid rail to be um, seven eighths of an inch as opposed to your uh, inch and a half. And you can modify the toe kick space on the cabinet. You can recess your toe kick on the side. This is nice on to, it's a nice little furniture finish on an island. Um, you can change the height of the, specify to modify the height of your toe kick. You might want it higher, and maybe if you're handicapped, AD, ADA, ADA, uh, the, you know, for uh, um, universal design, you can increase this toe kick on your whole entire order to be six inches high, but it would be an increase uh, for $66 the cabinet. Or you can have, in some cases, you have to remove the toe kick. So let's say you have a tall cabinet going into the space. You need to remove the toe kick on tall cabinets. You can't remove the toe kick on a, on a refrigerator, tall end panel, but you can remove the toe kick on certain cabinets so to get them in the elevator, to get them to, to stand up in the house. So you might need to remove that toe kick. Then you can also flush the front of the toe kick, giving you more of a furniture grade toe kick. So you can flush the front of the toe kick and make it all come down straight with the base frame of the cabinet. It won't be finished wood. Will it? Straight toe kick with center step up on a real extension. Uh, is it finished? To specify deeper flush toe, do not include finished ends. Say flush toe cabinets do not include finished ends unless ordered. If a cabinet next to a flush toe kick has a standard recessed toe kick, uh, the cabinet is exposed. So basically, if I have this flush toe kick and I'm the next cabinet next to it has a recessed toe kick. Let's say we use this fancy valance front in front of my sink. A lot of times we like to do a little sink with a decorative toe kick. What they're saying is if it does not come finish left, finish right standard, so where the other cabinet stepped back with the toe kick, this, this side is gonna be raw on this cabinet with the decorative valance toe kick. So you gotta make sure if the next cabinet next to it has a recessed toe kick that you order this cabinet with a finished left and a finished right so that when you see the toe kick, you don't have this unfinished, you'll never be able to finish it properly. So, and then here you have all your different Corval toe kicks and fancy toe kicks and a straight toe kick and all these other toe kick modifications. And another modification that I'm gonna point out before we finish, and I use this a lot because when you have a framed cabinet, like let's say you're doing a framed cabinet, the framed cabinets all have that recessed bottom. So each cabinet is going to have a, uh, a recess, a 30 inch cabinet, and then it'll come down and then your 24 inch cabinet. So each cabinet underneath there will have a, a, on the bottom of your wall cabinets will have that little reveal in between each cabinet. And depending on the cabinet, if it's a good cabinet company or if it's a less expensive cabinet company, if, is it going to be finished in the, the, the cherry to match the doors? Is it going to be, I know it's not going to be cherry wood, but it'll be stained to finish. So you can have that. In certain instances, let's say you have it above, all of a sudden you don't have a valance above your sink cabinet, but you just want to make the cabinet above the sink go a little higher. Well, that sink cabinet, a wall cabinet, is up a little higher, meaning it's more visible from underneath. So if that wall cabinet is up a little bit higher and it has an 
a, an unfinished or a recessed bottom or whatever, it might not look as nice. So for a more burn, a more refined custom look, you want to flush the bottom of the cabinet so that when you look up in the that wall cabinet, it's finished up in there. It's a nice finished cherry. It's no up reveal. It's no stain to match. It's it's completely finished like the side of a cabinet. I like to do that when I have my cabinet above my refrigerator. I like to, if it's not a built-in refrigerator, I like to flush that the bottom of that wall, the wall refrigerator cabinet, I flush the bottom of the wall cabinet. I can't say that I flush the top of the cabinets, but that's what that means. So you see, here's your flushed, finished bottom. Here you're recessing the bottom, but you want it to be finished. On the base cabinet, again, I don't know why you would use a flush finish top, but uh, I know why you would use this is one other thing. So in a base cabinet, when you have your flush finish top, base cabinets do not always come. A high-end custom line will have all the cabinets with a full dust top on it. A, a box you can't, can't see in the top of any base cabinets when you get them. Otherwise, you have to specify that finish top. And where that finish top on a base cabinet comes into play is when you're opening and closing the drawer, you will not hit, the, the your utensils will not get caught in the face frame of the, of the, the drawer box because it's a face frame. And so instead of having to feel up in there where there's no top your you, you know spatulas will get stuck this will get stuck well certain cabinets you can have it made with that base with a top on it meaning there is nowhere for your utensils and things to get stuck i have high-end custom cabinets in my kitchen and my hardware my spatula drawer and my knife or whatever drawer nothing gets stuck in there they might rub across the top of it but my drawers always pull out i never have anything stuck in my drawer because of the frame i mean the top so that's a modification that you would do and we can get into open shelving, more open shelving. We have pigeonholes that you can modify, you can add on. This is all still modifications. You can add your plate rack to it, base frame cabinets. You can scoop your little drawers. You can have your spice drawer. Uh, and it's all integrated into the frame, into the box of the cabinet made at the factory, no seams no uh nothing to add in the field um and they will even make a wood top uh wood top modifications um and your appliance panel modifications and this is all just modifications people so these are the things that you can do to a cabinet in modifications and then there's a whole nother section on accessories. I'm not going to talk about this in today's webinar because this is about modifications. So if you, let's see now, let me stop sharing. So that's our modifications. These are the things that differentiate knowledgeable kitchen designer and a non-knowledgeable kitchen designer because i know when i need to not have seams i combine cabinets when i don't want to have to start dealing with a filler in the the job site i can easily add a uh, one inch to an extended style for a cabinet let's say one cabinet is shallow one cabinet is deep this door will hit the side of the cabinet and won't open any more than 90 degrees. But if I want my hinge to open all the way, I would do an extended style to push that cabinet away a little bit. 
so that my contractor doesn't have to do any modifications in the field and it looks cleaner, it looks better. But again, all these things add to the price of the cabinet. So I hope this has been helpful about the modifications of the cabinetry. If you want to learn more, I have lots of knowledge. If you are working on a kitchen that you need help with, that you might want to, what function? My apologies for the tardiness. Will there be a video? Yes, there will be a video. There'll definitely be, I'm going to send everybody a video on this if you registered. So if you want to learn more things, I'm going to be doing webinars. I have another one coming on next week. Oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. I'm very glad to help everybody. Next week, I'm doing a webinar on the different constructions of, of uh, the difference between low construction, higher end construction, and your, your um, I took some pictures from the KBiz show and I wanted to really show people the differentiations between one cabinet company's draw, another cabinet company's draw, and really what you're getting and what you're paying for. That's what we need to know as a, as a designer. You need to know these things so you can um, advise your client properly and to work good with a kitchen professional. So whether you're a designer or a kitchen professional and you want to learn more things, Oh, good. Looking forward to the next webinar. Me too. And um, I get, again, I have my group coaching class, which is geared towards, oh thank, oh, thank you so much. Fabulous webinar. I'm so glad people enjoyed it. And spread the word. Let all your friends know how fabulous I am and my webinars are. And we'll all um, come into the group, come to my kitchen and bath design tips group. and. Um, all those good things, my group mastermind class. So if you want to delve more into really learning more about kitchens and bathroom design, I have my mastermind group classing classes. Oh, oh, how nice. Thank you for my, I do. I try to have a sense of humor. It's so freaking boring otherwise, right? Well, have, well on that note, thank you everybody for so so much of your interaction. I appreciate it. Spread the words, like, comment, share. Okay. Have a, oh, show us samples. Hmm. I, do, I showed you the book. Show you samples. Well, I have, you want physical samples? Oh, show us your kitchen. Oh, all right. I could do that. I could walk around with a webinar and show you my kitchen. See these kitchen, these cabinets framed and frameless. I could do that. Um, okay. My kitchen is older though. Uh, thank you so much for all of your nice comments, everybody. I appreciate that. Um, oh, so what? My kitchen is a little bit older. I actually want to redo my kitchen. And now that we're in quarantine like this, I keep wanting to uh, redo my house over. I'm ready to, to repaint. I'm ready to, to redecorate uh everybody i'm just so over this and i'm looking forward um oh the name of my facebook group is kitchen and bath bathroom kitchen and bathroom design tips for interior designers um i hope you all and have the ret i'll barter with you i'm a great <laughs> I need window treatments. I don't do window treatments. It's awful. I need help with window treatments. It's not my thing. Uh, yes, I'll, bar I'll barter with anybody. So anyway, love you all. Thank you so much. Um, and your chatting is really terrific. I'm, Zoom went okay. Zoom did pretty good. Um, uh, I'm, I'm good with the Zoom. The Zoom I did. I hope my Zoom was good. Was my Zoom good? Enjoy the rest of your day. Enjoy quarantine. Next week, I'm going to have my webinar again, like I said, on the, the really, the, the, I have some photos of different cabinet companies to see. And I look forward to seeing you all too. Thanks a lot and have a great day. Ciao for now. Ciao for now. Peace out. And end the meeting. Bye, everybody.